Right now, the Department of Education says Sun Prairie East High School is the subject of a Title IX investigation. What alleged incident sparked the investigation and controversy? Also, seven unions filed a lawsuit to overturn the law that put a ban on collective bargaining by unions representing teachers and other public workers. Plus, jobs and businesses in downtown Madison have nearly rebounded to their pre-pandemic numbers. We have a closer look at the numbers on the economic recovery. It's all ahead on News 3 Now at 6. The U.S. Department of Education opening a Title IX investigation into the Sun Prairie Area School District's handling of an incident earlier this year. It's alleged a transgender student exposed themselves to a group of female students in a locker room in March. The Department of Education tells us its Office of Civil Rights is looking into it. The incident involved an 18-year-old transgender student, a biological male who identifies as a transgender woman, undressing in front of four female students in the locker room at Sun Prairie East High School. Parents voiced concerns over the district's handling after details became public, especially after the national Fox News outlet shared the story. District leaders countered those claims of scrutiny, saying the reports of in the incident were ill-informed, inaccurate, and incomplete. The school district plans to cooperate with the Office of Civil Rights. Seven unions have filed a lawsuit to end Act 10, a law passed in 2011 by former Governor Scott Walker that created a near-total ban of collective bargaining for most public employees. And this Act 10 lawsuit is the first since Wisconsin's Supreme Court flipped to liberal control back in August. However, it was filed in a county circuit court and could take more than a year to make its way up for a final ruling. Act 10 effectively ended collective bargaining for most public unions. The law's introduction led to massive week-long protests. Today's lawsuit, filed by teachers and other public workers, alleges that the law's exemption of some police, firefighters, and public safety workers violates Wisconsin's Constitution equal protection guarantee. New at 6, an early morning narcotics investigation in Beloit brought out the SWAT team. A 30-year-old man was arrested after they searched through a home on Middle Street about 6.30 this morning. The search uncovered more than 242 grams of cocaine, 28 grams of fentanyl, and 40 grams of marijuana. Officials say the man faces multiple charges related to drug trafficking. We are not naming him as he has not yet been formally charged. A mistrial has been declared in the case of a man accused of groping a woman on State Street last year. Court records show the case against 22-year-old Ivan Smart was handed over to the jury for deliberations last night after 5 o'clock. Well, this morning at 11, they told the judge they were at an impasse. The judge then ruled a mistrial. Smart was charged with second-degree sexual assault after a woman said he and another man groped her without her consent near a downtown bar. The assault allegedly continued in a car before the woman fought back and escaped. Well, there is a chance we end the week with some scattered rain and snow showers. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti has those details in the first warn forecast. Yeah, a lot of it will depend on where you are, especially tomorrow during the day. I think north of Madison will probably stay dry, but south of Madison will see a mixture of rain and snow showers. Today, though, was a pretty nice day. The time lapse from the WISC TV SkyCam shows bright sunshine through much of the day. Didn't get much cloud cover. I thought we'd have a little bit more, and so temperatures were actually a little bit warmer than expected. And those clouds, what thin clouds there are aren't bringing any precipitation around here that will change by uh, early tomorrow morning high temperatures today 47 in Madison 48 in Janesville Milwaukee topped out at 51 degrees so that sunshine and getting rid of a lot of the snow made a big difference but right now temperatures have dropped here in Madison we're at 31 uh, Janesville still at 36 uh, Temperatures are generally in the 30s here in Dane County, uh, down to 33 in Verona, 31 in Sun Prairie, and 32 in Deerfield. Look for skies to be clear to partly cloudy this evening. Temperatures dropping into the upper 20s by late evening. Later on, I'll take a look at the timing of the rain and snow and how much we can expect over the weekend. Reporting from a UW-Madison student paper indicates the president of the Universities of Wisconsin privately suggested chancellors shift away from liberal arts programs at some campuses. The student paper has received praise for its coverage online, while the UW system president described the reporting as mischaracterized. Our Catherine Merck spoke with the student reporter behind it. Catherine? Liam has been with his student paper, The Daily Cardinal, for a semester and a half. He says months of work went toward his article about an email from the system president. According to the email obtained by The Daily Cardinal, Jay Rothman suggested chancellors consider shifting away from liberal arts programs, particularly at campuses with low-income students. In a tweet, the system president said that his communication was mischaracterized, expressing his disappointment with the student paper. However, the student author says he's proud of what the publication was able to release. 
it is important that the public gets an idea of what goes on internally at the UW system. As much as that sort of uh, response might not be what we hope for as a paper, um, I think that is important in any case uh, to get a story out there um, regardless of what potential backlash, backlash might be to it. Rothman's comments come as state Republican lawmakers continue to explore future employment changes for the universities of Wisconsin by withholding pay raises for employees and inflicting millions of dollars of budget cuts. Despite the response from Rothman, the student journalist tells me he's received a lot of positive reaction from other journalists in the state about the impact of his reporting. Catherine, thank you. The Wisconsin State Senate's top Democrat says leaving her post to make a run to replace Dane County Executive Joe Parisi. Senate Minority Leader Melissa Agard making that announcement this morning. Parisi announced in early October he will retire at the end of his term in June. Now, during her candidacy announcement, Agard shared how local government assistance like food stamps and housing resources helped her when she was younger. I have personally benefited from the services that our county does provide, and I am running for county executive to ensure that everyone in our community knows that their dreams matter and that they have the same opportunities and support that I had. Agard was first elected to office in 2010 when voters chose her for the Dane County Board of Supervisors. Last year, she was unanimously elected as Senate Democratic leader. Tonight, the Wanaki community is grieving the loss of a former high school football and wrestling standout. A 22-year-old Reed Ryan passed away Tuesday after going into cardiac arrest last week during a football workout at his college. Ryan, a 2019 grad of Wanaki, was named the 2018 State Defensive Player of the Year and finished as runner-up at state wrestling. He went on to earn a full football scholarship at North Dakota State, winning two national titles there. Ryan then transferred to the University of Minnesota Duluth this year, and in a statement, UMD head coach Kurt Wiese said in part, quote, Reed aspired to be better every day at whatever tasks was at hand. He helped bring out the best in others with his positive attitude, infectious smile, and genuine care for the people around him. Reed will be greatly missed, but his legacy will live on forever. His funeral will be held Saturday at Blackhawk Church in Middleton. Well, this week marks the start of the NFL's My Cause, My Cleat campaign, which gives players the chance to wear custom-designed cleats, bringing awareness to an important cause or charity. Well, check out what former Badger T.J. Watt is wearing. He will carry a piece of Madison with him when his team, the Pittsburgh Steelers, take the field on Sunday against Arizona. His cleats honors the work being done every day at American Family Children's Hospital. When playing for the Badgers, he and other Badger student athletes visited the hospital, bringing smiles to the faces of patients there. Reflecting on those visits, he told Steelers.com, it's one of those things that every time I would leave there, I was the one that felt like I really needed it. I always felt so good going over there and making as big of an impact as possible. Well, as the year winds down, a new report on the state of downtown Madison is here. The report highlights how the city has grown economically, but is still recovering from the pandemic. Our Jalen Banks joins us now live in downtown Madison with some of the key points from this report. Jalen? Eric and Charlotte, I would say the main point of the report is just how close downtown Madison is getting to how it was pre-pandemic. The number of people working in downtown Madison exceeded 50,000 in 2020. In 2023, the number of employees is just a thousand shy of that. As for the number of businesses, there are over 1,950, which is just 30 shy of what it was in 2020. The group that put together the study says those numbers are due to the number of locally owned businesses that there are in downtown. But one area the study could improve on is how the housing is how housing in the downtown area could improve. The area we'd certainly like to see more improvement on is the number of housing units in the downtown. It's grown significantly, uh, over 50% growth in the last 10 years. We have over 11,000 uh, apartment units now, but we don't have enough. The multifamily vacancy rate in downtown is about three to three and a half percent. That is not a healthy number. You need a healthy number of about 5% to ensure that there is enough housing available and at the right prices for folks in the market. Another key point in the study is for Dane County as a whole, the total number of businesses is just 40 shy of what it was in the year of 2020. For the full state of the downtown Madison report, you can find it on our website at channel3000.com. Reporting in Madison, Jalen Banks, News 3 Now. More local stories are straight ahead at 6. Quick Trip is getting even more convenient. The company is adding self-checkout, but not every store will receive them. We'll share why next.
McCann Furniture is closing its doors forever. The owners are retiring. It's the final days of our going out of business sale. After 119 years, our final day is December 17th. Everything in the store must be sold. Make us an offer on quality name brand furniture, including Amish, dining room and bedroom sets, recliners, upholstery, and mattresses. Free financing, special sale hours. Time is running out, so hurry in today to the final days going out of business sale at McGann Furniture, downtown Baraboo. You'll be glad you did. The next generation of streaming is here. Introducing Spectrum One Stream with Spectrum Internet delivering fast and reliable speeds. Advanced Wi-Fi for enhanced security on your devices. Spectrum Mobile with unlimited talk, text, and data. And now TV with the all-new Zumo Stream Box. Get Spectrum One Stream with Internet for $49.99 a month. Plus free advanced Wi-Fi, a free unlimited Spectrum Mobile line, and the Zumo Stream Box. Free when you add Spectrum TV. Call 833-9 7-6-4-9-9-9. With Spectrum and Zumo, all your favorites are brought together in one place. Use the voice remote to search across live TV, on-demand movies and shows, and the most popular streaming apps to watch what you want faster and easier than ever. It's streaming simplified. Get Spectrum One Stream with internet, advanced Wi-Fi, mobile, and now TV. Go to spectrum.com slash stream, a Spectrum store, or call 833-976-4999. Saving money right now at Menards. Cut the cord and turbocharge your next project with Bosch Cordless Power Tools. They're designed to tackle the toughest jobs. Rip, cut, drill, and drive. Faster charging speeds. Longer run times and lasting durability. Pick up this 18-volt compact drill kit for $98.97. Cut the cost without cutting corners and grab the 18-volt cordless circular saw or reciprocating saw. Now just $99 each at Menards. Save big money at Menards. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Pretty soon your trips to Quick Trip will be even quicker. The convenience store chain announcing new stores will have self-checkout kiosks. Those kiosks will accept all forms of payment and Quick Trip rewards. But don't worry, according to the company, those self-checkouts will not replace any human employees. Exist existing stores will not be retrofitted to accommodate the kiosks. Well, if you need a Christmas tree, be like Clark Griswold, head out to the forest to find that perfect Christmas tree. The DNR says balsam firs and various pines are available to be cut down throughout the northern state forest. You'll have to drive a little bit though, but it could make for a perfect weekend adventure. Permits can be bought at the headquarters of each property. They average about $5 per tree. A reminder, harvesting is not offered at state parks or at the southern state forest. For a list of state forests available, Look for this story on channel3000.com. When you do spend time in the outdoors this winter, make sure to be careful around frozen bodies of water. That's right. Lakes and rivers will soon be covered in ice. DNR reminding you to practice ice safety this winter. And here are a few tips offered. Contact any fishing clubs, bait shops, or outfitters before heading out onto any ice and let someone know your plans. Wear ice creepers on your boots. Carry a spud bar to check ice conditions in front of you. Also carry extra spikes and a light rope to pull yourself and others out if you do fall through the ice. Still ahead at six, the story of a wrestler overcoming adversity. We'll introduce you to a Wisconsin woman whose fight in the ring does not compare to the fight she's faced outside of it. And Gary's back. Another check of your first worn forecast just ahead. Stay with us. Black Friday deals have been extended for one final week at Furniture and Appliance Mart. It's your last chance to save up to 43% off top brand appliances while they last. Plus low monthly payments with special interest financing on appliances at Furniture and Appliance Mart inside Ashley. Whatever the holidays mean to you, get the most out of them in a new Honda. Whether it's taking in the lights with all your friends in a spacious Accord, or taking in a snow day in a rugged CRV. Your holiday adventure awaits with a new Honda during Happy Honda Days. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or visit your local Honda dealer today.
You want it, we got it, it's all here. Rosemont it, you want some ice time, a nice time, so good you post it twice time. Enjoy the magic of the North Pole, just east of O'Hare, with miles of memories waiting to be made. To Rosemont it your way, start at Rosemont.com. Rosemont The next generation of streaming is here. Introducing Spectrum One Stream, with internet, advanced Wi-Fi, mobile, and now TV. With the all-new Zumo Stream Box, it's streaming simplified. Get Spectrum One Stream with fast and reliable internet for $49.99 a month, free advanced Wi-Fi, a free unlimited mobile line, and a free Zumo Stream Box when you add Spectrum TV. Go to spectrum.com slash stream, a Spectrum store, or call 833-976-4999. Black Friday deals have been extended for one final week at Ashley. It's your last chance to save up to 65% off doorbusters and special deals on our hottest look store-wide. Plus special interest financing for six long years with low monthly payments only at Ashley. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. In two days, top wrestlers from around the region will take to the ring for the Blizzard Brawl. It's happening at the Waukesha County Expo Center on Saturday. As Emerson Lehman reports, one of the wrestlers there knows a thing or two about fighting for her life. Before she was training to win a title fight at Blizzard Brawl 2023 as Harley Jane, Sophia Gudgaudis was in a fight for her life. She only had a 15% chance of surviving the stroke. At the age of 19, Lily Gudgaudis' daughter was left paralyzed following a rare stroke. For the two hours, I just, we prayed, you know, you call up all your friends, but you get prepared to say goodbye. The odds were stacked against the young woman. They hadn't faced a fighter like this. If someone tell me I can't do it, I have to go and do it. Sophia survived the surgery, but her road to recovery was going to be anything but easy. She had to learn to walk again talk again, how to chew food. When you don't food something right back, you just depress. Then, an unlikely solution. After physical therapy, about having a hard day, I would turn on wrestling, and it saved my life. In 2021, on a trip to Chicago to watch the All Elite Wrestling Tour, everything clicked. I just saw him fiffing and doing moves, and I told my mom and my dad, hey, I didn't do it. Why not me? She applied to a wrestling academy in Texas to learn from one of her favorite wrestlers of all time and a legend of the sport, Dustin Rhodes. I hope one day to be with WWE or AEW. I know I will one day. On Saturday night, the 24-year-old Harley James focus is on the Great Lakes Championship wrestling title belt. As for Sophia, she hopes her journey will inspire others to never give up. It was hard for me to keep going, but I did it with my family and my friends, you know, and wrestling. <laughs> She's a fighter. She's never going to stop fighting. And for anyone wanting to watch her wrestle this weekend, here are the details for Blizzard Brawl, 7 p.m. Saturday at the Waukesha County Expo Center. You can buy tickets online at blizzardbrawl.com. Gary's back. Another check of the forecast. No blizzards in our forecast, but... Gary, how about any snow out there? Could see a little snow mixed in with rain, especially south of Madison tomorrow. Three things you need to know. We'll also see some rain and snow showers uh, Saturday night into Sunday. And there could be some minor snow accumulations there. Also, some snow showers Monday night into Tuesday. That'll be mainly snow as temperatures will be a little bit colder. And that could bring some minor accumulations, maybe an inch or two on Tuesday. But by the end of the week, temperatures will warm up. We're back into the middle to upper 40s. Uh, on Doppler track to the south, there's plenty of rain, not much around here. In fact, uh, Wisconsin is pretty much free of precipitation. But as that rain moves northward, our temperatures have started to cool down. So the northern edge of that precipitation shield will start to change over to snow. And you can see this on future track beginning at 6 a.m. Mixture of rain and snow down toward the Illinois state line. Notice temperatures here in Madison by 9 a.m. in the lower 30s. Cold enough for snow, but most of the precipitation is to our south. There might be some minor accumulations around Monroe and Janesville, but notice that the day goes on by noontime, temperatures mid 30s in Monroe, upper 30s in Janesville. So that will probably just lead to a mix of rain and snow. And areas north of Madison will probably stay dry. Uh, this will continue through uh, tomorrow afternoon. And then
then as we head into tomorrow night, temperatures will start to turn colder. The first wave of precipitation will ride off to the east. The second wave more spotty in nature, just snow showers and flurries. Uh, temperatures will be cold enough for snow to stick to the ground, but it'll be more spotty. Um, most areas will see less than an inch of accumulation. And then by early Saturday morning, the snow will be ending. We might even see a couple of breaks in the clouds early in the day on Saturday before the next round arrives Saturday night into Sunday. High temperatures over the next 10 days, near normal from Friday through Wednesday, but notice above normal, well into the 40s, maybe close to 50 degrees by Friday of next week. And notice the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook for the first two weeks of De or the second week of December. Above normal temperatures almost across the entire country. Highest probabilities just out to the west of us. And above normal precipitation, a broad area of that with mainly light and uh, weak weather systems moving across the country. No major storms expected. Planning your night. Skies will be clear to partly cloudy this evening. Temperatures drop into the upper 20s by uh, 9 p.m. By, uh, by midnight. They're in the mid to upper 20s. Temperatures cool off into the middle 20s by early tomorrow morning as the clouds increase from the south. And again, the rain-snow mixture starts to arrive near the Illinois state line by early tomorrow morning. Uh, here in Dane County, planning your night, look for a low of 27 in Oregon, 27 in Marshall, 27 in DeForest, across the rest of southern Wisconsin. Light snow may reach uh, Janesville by early tomorrow morning. Temperature of 34, 26 for the low in Lone Rock and down to 21 in Camp Douglas. Here in Madison for tomorrow, look for a high of 37 degrees, so it will be colder. But rain and snow showers will be mainly south of Madison. Rainfall amounts over the weekend, less than a tenth of an inch north and west of Madison, maybe a tenth to a quarter of an inch south and east of town, not a lot of moisture. And snowfall amounts less than an inch in most areas, might be an inch or two down toward the Illinois state line, but in a couple of waves and some of that may melt in between. First warrant 7 to 10 day forecast, 30 Saturday and Sunday, back up to 40 with some sunshine on Monday. And then that snow shower uh, system on Tuesday, temperatures warm up to near 50 by Friday of next week, some rain and snow showers toward the end of next weekend. We'll be right back. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. What you see is important. That makes quality eye care important too. Get personalized care from experienced optometrists at Shopco Optical. Better eye care. You'll see. Don't need glasses. See us for your contacts and save on your annual supply. Get four Arby's Classic Roast Beef Sandwiches for just 10 bucks. That's one for now, one after that, one to celebrate the first two, and one more because that's how many four is. Arby's, we have the meat. Think all Medicare plans are the same? Think again. A Medicare Advantage plan from Dean Health Plan gives you the benefits you need with premiums as low as $0 a month. Medical, hospital, and prescription drug coverage comes with $0 co-pays for primary care doctor visits. And extra benefits can help you save even more. Get preventive and comprehensive dental, $250 for eyewear, and $750 for hearing aids. Plus, you can save on over-the-counter health and wellness items. All this and a free fitness membership at more than 20,000 locations. Call 1-866-249-1748 now to request your free Dean Health Plan Medicare Advantage Guide. That's 1-866-249-1748. Dean Health Plan, right here with you. Steinhoffel Cyber Week is here. Get some of the best prices of the season online and in store. Save an extra $100 off your purchase of $19.99 or take advantage of great deals like a Sealy mattress, $1.99. This dining table, only $2.99. A twin storage bed, now $4.99. Leather reclining sofa, just $12.99. And make your new room more affordable with Steinhoffel's 72 month financing. It's the Cyber Week sale. Shop in store or online at steinhoffels.com. Time is running out. Shopco Optical can help maximize your vision benefits and FSA dollars before they expire. Get a comprehensive eye exam and discover your new style. Call Shopco Optical or visit shopco.com to schedule your exam. Friday morning, we're helping you plan your weekend with a little holiday cheer. Where you can catch area tree lightings to get in the spirit. And we'll have an update on our chance of rain and snow throughout the weekend. Join us tomorrow morning between 4.30 and 7.00.
Well, it's been quite a week for UW Volleyball standout Sarah Franklin. She was the Conference Player of the Week, the National Player of the Week. Now she's been named the best in the Big Ten, becoming the sixth Badger to add Big Ten Player of the Year to her accolades. In the month of November alone, Franklin finished with 127 kills in eight matches. She, along with Carter Booth and Anna Smrek, were tabbed first team all Big Ten. Wisconsin opens up the NCAA tournament tonight against Jackson State. I think it's been a while since the Badger women's hockey team skated on home ice. You are correct. Saturday marks the first time since October 21st they'll play at Le bon Arena. And if there's one thing we know about their home bar, we know Mark Johnson's squad rarely loses there. In fact, the Badgers have lost just 19 times there ever, and they can't wait to be back in front of their home fans. Feels like it's been forever, um, especially with the off weekends and stuff. Yeah, I think over a month, that's crazy. Um, it's obviously exciting just to play in front of those fans again um, and just have them behind you the whole time. The fans give us that extra bit of energy, which is so awesome to have, and we've definitely missed it while traveling so much, and I know everyone's super excited. And in about an hour, the Volleyball Badgers hosting Jackson State in the Fieldhouse in the first round of the NCAA Tournament. Ahead of that, Sports Director Zach Hanley caught up with former Badger National Champ Lauren Barnes. Here's a sneak peek of this week's Huddle Unleashed. And welcome to this week's Wisconsin Huddle Unleashed. I'm Zach Hanley. She's Lauren Barnes. And we're going to play some checkers. Lauren, when's the last time you played checkers? Oh, gosh, I don't even remember. It's probably my grandma's basement <laughs> like eight Thanksgivings ago, honestly. <laughs> so it's been a while, so I yes. have a chance. So, favorite memory at the Fieldhouse? Oh, uh, probably our last, my last win there. Uh, I think we swept Minnesota to go to the Final Four. Not I think, I know. <laughs> we swept them to go to the Final Four. Um, but, yeah. Three Big Tens, three Big Ten titles and a national championship later, right? Yes, yes. I will say, I did win one at Minnesota too, but yep. that ring is <laughs> usually kind of hidden. <laughs> so, okay, so you got, what, five rings? Yeah, I think so. So, do you ever take them out and like, where, like, where that's are people, That's like the favorite question. They're really just in my ring box. Okay. <laughs> I have a ring box sitting on, on my dresser um, in my room, and that, that's about it. They just sit there. <laughs> You're like Tom Brady with all those rings. Yeah. Gary's back, final check of the forecast. Yeah, pretty nice out there right now. The live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam. Skies are clear here in Madison. Uh, high temperatures today were pretty mild. 47 Madison, 48 in Janesville. Look where temperatures have dropped to now. 31 Madison, 36 Janesville. Already down into the middle 20s over into parts of central Wisconsin. But cloud cover coming in from the south will keep us from getting too cold for tonight. Right now, 32 in Verona, 30 in Wanakee, and 34 in Sauk City. Look for skies to be clear to partly cloudy this evening. Temperatures dropping off into the upper 20s by 10 p.m., but... As you take a look at the first one, 7 to 10 day forecasts, unsettled weather this weekend. Some rain and snow shower chances, then maybe some snow showers Tuesday. At the end of next week, looking pretty nice. High temperatures mid to upper 40s by Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. All right, not bad, no, really, no. for this time of the year. We're not, not gonna digging complain. out and running a foot of snow yet. We'll take it. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 6. Have a great evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.